Writing a book is not an easy feat, neither is reading one. Yet there is so much information contained in books that can transform our lives. Which is why we decided to create a program that puts the spotlight on books. Chapters brings you in-depth conversations with authors who have written on different concepts, themes and subject matters that involve everyday life and living. It is our desire to improve the reading culture in our society and to see one another live our lives to the fullest. You are welcome to Chapters. My name is Tori Oyemade and I will be your host. Adversity is like a strong wind that blows heavily upon us, turning tables around, leaving us wounded and broken. But just like the saying goes, life is not about waiting for the storm to pass, but about learning to dance in the rain. Today on Chapters, I'll be speaking with Kike Lomo Mudiaga, a worship leader and also the author of the book and the Storm King, Triumphing Over Trying Times. Thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's such a, you know, I always say that um, you are the one who inspired the whole concept of what we're doing today. And I read your book. I remember listening to an interview you had on Inspiration FM, which was maybe 2013 or some time back. And you talked about the book. And I thought I would like to read that book. And so finally last year, 2015, I got the book and I read it. And I just kept thinking, People need this information. People need, because especially as Christians, a lot of things happen to everyone. Loss, pain, job loss, financial yeah. issues, yeah. marital issues, children, all sorts of things. And people think, why as a Christian should this happen to me? But before I go into the conversation, people wonder what she's talking about. I'll just let you tell a bit of your story as you would like to tell it. Okay. Um, and the storm came came about um, as a result of some personal, I would call it family tragedies, series of family tragedies we had to go through. Um, it started with losing my immediate um, elder brother. And you were 16? I yes, I was 16 time. then. And then um, I think about 10 years after, I lost my mom and my sister on the same day. And um, about nine years after, my dad passed as well. So um, the book, I started to, to pen down thoughts about writing the book um, after my mom and my sister. And then I eventually rounded off writing the book after my dad passed. So um, it was a very trying time. <laughs> and I particularly, I was jogging one morning and I, you know how you just, you hear sometimes God speaks to you and it's like a suggestion, an idea. It wasn't suggesting that I write the book, he was commanding me <laughs> to, to, write, the to book. write the book. Because it took, you know, it took a bit of time to, I didn't want to relive the pain. the pain. And I knew if I started to write, I would, you know, it was like, the wound had healed and mm. you're telling me to op cut it open again. again. So it took me almost eight years to finish wow. the book because eight there years. were yes, there were times when I would just say, you know what, I'm not, I can't do this, <laughs> you know, I can't do this. And um, there was actually a time I lost all the data and I said, yes, you see now I have, <laughs> an, now I have an excuse to, 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 to you this. know, but it just won't leave. It was like a baby kicking and. I couldn't find any sort of fulfillment or peace until, you know, the book was ready. And, um, yeah. and here we have this yes. day. But going through the book, and I, I would just like us to go through, you know, some of the themes and concepts that you went, that you talked about mm -hmm. in the book, even starting from the very beginning, okay, so you told us what happened 
and you had lost your brother, mm -hmm. and then your mother and your sister on the same day. And I always say, think about losses, which was, you even mentioned that, that ailment for some, sometimes, you know, you're prepared. Mm. But this is just, it's sudden. you just get a phone call. Mm. How did you handle that whole period for when you lost your mom <laughs> and your sister? Okay, um, that was probably the, I mean, the most devastating of them all. Um, because you're looking at two, 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 two people in your life that were bringing different things, you know, the mother, the covering, the comfort, and your sister, who was like your best friend, you know. Um, who you had seen two days before, because mm -hmm. she came to visit you in, in school. In school, you know. So the, the shock, I would say, is, is what just doesn't leave you, mm. you know. Suddenly, like you, you earlier said about if, if they were ill or if there was something going on, you would know, mm -hmm. okay, this, from nowhere, because we're actually getting ready for, preparing for my, my el the firstborn's wedding. Wow. So it was just um, about a month wow. away. So there was a lot of hype in the air. Everybody was excited. We were making guest lists and, oh, we'll bring it, you know, wow. finding ways to bring all your friends from everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was uh, such a opposite of what was you know what going you on. Yes, for at the time. and um, <laughs> it was unspeakable because you can't. You you have no words. You're not prepared. <laughs> Where do you start from? It just hits like the storm, you know, and. Um, in the book, you talked about the fact that mm -hmm. you seem to be strong, even mm -hmm. on the day of the burial. You were the one you know, consoling so everybody. Mm -hmm. There was some form of joy. Do you think that's because somewhere you hadn't let the emotions, which is what some of us do sometimes. It's mm -hmm. like the emotions, are, we lock it up somewhere, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, you just break down. I think there's some, sometimes, it depends on, I think also on the personality. I... I started taking responsibility early, okay. you know. So maybe there was that side of me of, okay, I have to be in charge, mm. you know. And that just kicked in. Okay, I have to set out. I have to help everyone else mm -hmm. cope with this. <laughs> I'm in charge. I need to take care of the younger ones. Okay, mm. who, is, who, is, who, is, who is with daddy? Mm. Who is, have they, you know, it was actually a defense mechanism, you know, exactly. survival mode, you know, so just... Not, you wouldn't know that you're actually trying not to break down or trying not to deal with it, but sometimes we just go in that mode. It's, you know, some sort of protection for your emotions. You're not ready to crash, to crash. just yet, you know. So that I took that on, took all the work on. There was a lot of preparations going on for both a wedding and a burial. So you this know? wedding still held. Oh, you still it still had did. to hold. It did. The wedding still held because my dad insisted. We're not going to let, let them, you know, wow. the enemy just steal everything. So mm -hmm. everything was prepared, you know. Wow. I remember we're wondering, who did mommy give the clothes to? <laughs> well, you know, there are things that she knew, she handled. She handled. She knew. And we're wondering, who do we call? Okay, which tailor did she use? Where? You know, wow. all of that. And you're trying to do a lot of things. But that actually, you know, gave me something to do. <laughs> you know. So that was a very good distraction. It was a distraction. So when did the crash finally mm. happen? For me, I think it took about a month or two so after, after, the wedding. after the wedding. After the wedding, when everything was sort of piping down, all the, you know, well wishes and condolences, mm -hmm. the flowers had withered and, you know. <laughs> and there was no activity. Yes, there was no activity. Things were beginning to come back to, okay, this is normal, mm. okay, go to school, okay, you know. And then I remember waking up one morning. I had just dreamt that I was with my mom. So we're discussing or some sort. And then it was time to go. It was time to, I could feel myself waking up from, this, from the Oops. dream. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to wake up. I need to stay here. And that's when I, I just, I broke out from my sleep. From my sleep. I just wow. screamed out from you know, my sleep. And before that time, I would normally, if everyone was crying and grieving in their own way, if ever you mm. had to break down, maybe you picked up the phone and it was my sister's voice on the answering machine, or like, you know, but everyone was having their secret moments of grief, you know, 
because you wouldn't want to start crying and then make everyone cry. So mm. there was, you know, you would, of course, you would hear someone sniffing at night or, you know, it was just everyone trying to look Handle out. Handle their own way. Yes, you know, privately. So I remember that morning thinking to myself, are you sure you want to cry? <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it was just the, the first thought. As but I, had you cried before that? Time? Not, not. Not publicly? Yes, okay. apart from when we all first heard, okay. you know. And, and I remember, no, and, and I remember saying to myself, no, I'm, I don't care. I don't care who hears me. I don't, I just, you know, just let it, yes, let it all out. And um, I think that for me was the first, um, because of the, the probably come in series, you mm. know, different times, different reasons, but that was the first major, you know. Um, Time that you just really let it, let it out. out. You know, um, and, and it, it helps because sometimes grieving privately, you don't know that you're not helping the other person as well, mm. you know, because they probably just want someone else to break down so they can break down, they too. Can break down too. And we know we're all in this together. I'm here for you, you know. Oh, so you're feeling this yes. way, you know, not looking at you like, okay, this must be a super woman, <laughs> or why, you know, maybe I'm the weak one or something. but. Just knowing that there's someone feeling what you're feeling, and it was it was um, it was a good time for all of us to let out that to morning. Out. <laughs> but that was really just the beginning mm -hmm. of the process of the yes, pain process. and the healing mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. I will talk about that when we come back. We have to go on a short break, but we'll be right back. Still talking about the book and the storm came with Kike Mudiaga. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm still talking to Kike Mudiaga, the author of the book And the Storm Came. And we're talking about how to overcome trying times and adversity that we all face. Truly, we all face. And we're just talking about, you know, when you finally broke down after the loss of your mom and your sister. But then what started happening? So we all have the time when we crash. Mm -hmm. But the crash is not the end of the pain. It's really just the beginning True. of the of pain, the which for some takes years, months days and all of that and in your book you talked about how you went through depression eating disorders in fact you started really eating mm -hmm. you know depression is something that especially as christians we don't like to say that mm -hmm. we have everybody's supposed to be strong in the lord but these things are real these emotions are real for you who was someone very close to the lord mm -hmm. how did you handle that time and even how did you handle your relationship with god in that time mm -hmm. first I would probably re rewind a bit. Um, right after the, the, the incident, I would uh, remember running to God and, you know, like just sort of give me an explanation, you know, help me the understand. Why. Yes, the whys. What is going on? Why is this happening? And, you know, sort of waiting for an answer, waiting for, you know, a reply. So I was waiting for a reply for a while, mm. you know, because you just feel, okay, this is my buddy yeah. now, my best friend. He'll, he'll talk, even though maybe the, 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 the line is busy. I'll just hang on, <laughs> you know. So there was, that, there was that phase of the questions, you know, just coming in and out of my head. And in between that, you would find, you know, there'll be days when I would feel so down, depressed, you know, mm. couldn't pick myself up, you know. But... For me, what really helped me was being really active in church, being a worship leader. Mm. I knew I had to pick myself up somehow, you know. As much as I wanted to wallow in, it's like a, it's like swimming in in a pond willingly. You could decide to just just have a a lovely day and in this pond and there. just stay there. So basically, picking yourself up from that depression is. An intentional process it's mm, deliberate you you choose whether you want to stay there or not and I find that going to church hearing the word you know would always challenge you the Word of God would always work do its work you know so you go to church and it's as if the pastor lives next door and he's hearing, and he's hearing your yes thoughts. your thoughts and you're like okay 
gives you more hope and you go again then you come down again down mm. the, the you know down, down from yes there. and then it picks you up so can you imagine staying away from church or perhaps staying away from god mm. you probably just would just drown in there and sometimes some people drown so low and they can't come up again yes which is why you talked about isolation mm. and sometimes you really just want to be in your own space exactly where you're like nobody can understand mm -hmm. i'm going through this alone yes. i shut out the world mm -hmm. and that's a dangerous place it is to be isn't it it i would it's a two-sided thing because i remember right after my dad i i just wanted to at that point maybe perhaps because i had been through something similar i just thought hey god you know what i think i need to run away from you <laughs> at this you know, point in time I'm, you know i need a break four people in exactly. alone what just was the problem go your way let me go mine i need to take a break so i i got on a plane and just traveled i didn't want wow. to, i didn't want to be with anyone i didn't want to serve in church i didn't mm. i just wanted to go somewhere and just forget forget everything and just you know, take a walk on the beach, watch mm. movies all day, just do nothing. That's what I wanted to do. And I did that for, how long? for I think, about a, two months. Wow. Yes. I just didn't want any sort of, you know, responsibility or, or I didn't want anyone around me. I didn't want to hear what I've heard over what and over know. again, what I know exactly. So... You know, I, um, I said, okay, we, Lord, I'm not, it's not, we're not breaking, it's not, we're not breaking any in our relationship. <laughs> we just need a break, you know. So that was what, what happened. <laughs> and so sometimes you need that break because mm -hmm. sometimes people are trying to help, but they're not really, really helping because... They're really doing more harm. Yes, you're just, sometimes you want someone to just sit and cry with you, mm -hmm. not keep... Telling you, well, no, the Lord is good. I know <laughs> you never good. give him more than you can bear. It's like, okay, I know that. I know that much. Can you just? Can I just cry? Is it okay to cry? To just cry or scream? Yes, yeah. you know. And I got that in an interesting way, you know. Um, and you need both of them. Mm. I remember particularly, I would mention this: my spiritual father, Pastor Paul, and his wife. They gave me that. They gave me the two sides of the coin. I would go up a story fine and she was there when I just wanted to cry and just you know, she she just had a nice way of just sending me a text at three AM, not knowing I'm awake and I just needed that and she would we would call each other and she would just listen to me cry. I needed mm. that. And Pastor Paul on the other hand was like, Okay, Kike, what's next? We need to move. Okay. And I needed that too. There are times when I'll be why doesn't it just let me cry? Just yeah. say Kike, can we just cry? <laughs> no, but he would always like, what what's what's next? You know, so he was mm. pushing me forward. Don't go back. Mm. What's next? What do you want to do? What do you want to, you know, what's the next thing in your agenda? What do you want to achieve? Okay, do you want to go to school? Okay, after that, okay, is it the master's? What? He kept pushing me forward, which is something we all need. We need yes. to know that. There are people, there are still people alive. I mean, imagine someone Life losing, goes on. yes, a, ch a child. There are maybe there they are two have other, three, exactly, other children. three other children who need you. So you can't just sit back and dwell on the one that is no longer there and now you know ignore the people that still need you so that you will need both sides the balance. The balance. But, but you know the pain mm -hmm. pain is real and pain and I, I have to take a quote from even your book when you talked about talks about pain i think that was page 44 i've read this book so much i just marked <laughs> all sorts and you said mm -hmm. the intensity of our pain mm -hmm. can sometimes make us forget the joy of all the blessings That's that surround us lovely. and you know even if you say you know i still have my father or maybe when you lost i still have 10 other siblings mm -hmm. i still have four other children that one just seems like oh why yeah. and you talked about the process of pain but mm -hmm. also the purpose of, of pain, pain. Mm -hmm. That chapter, I think, is one of the strongest <laughs> chapters. You know, let me tell you something about that book. chapter. That chapter wasn't meant to be there. I was still searching for a publisher, and I had gone through for the first publisher. I wasn't satisfied, so I had to change, you know, end that contract and basically get what I really needed. And that was when the other chapter came. I was just praying one morning, and I heard that word, purpose of pain. Hmm. And God, as usual, said, I command you to write that <laughs> chapter, to add that chapter. It just won't go. I knew I had to add that chapter. And for me, it's the strongest it is. part of the book. It, was, it, would, it gave me so much healing, just writing that, just pouring that out, to know that pain has purpose. God is 
He's so intentional. The hair in your nose was, is there for a purpose. The wax in your ear. So he wouldn't do something that, you know, big in your life. That such an event for nothing, you know. He's not that jobless. He's not that jobless. No, he, everything is, has a purpose. Mm. So that to know, to look at pain, to flip it, you know, against the devil and say, hey, I'm taking this as fuel, and as something energy. Is going to come out something of is this. going to come out of this. Not, okay, you, he hit me, I'm down. And I'm just going to stay me. there. Yeah, but to know that this is purpose. There's something that this pain is doing. I can see the bad things it's doing, but I can choose to also see that it's the doing good something thing. good. And I need to, you know, maximize that. So you know, the powerful example you mm -hmm. used, you said we should liken it to a five-year-old in the hospital. <laughs> about to experience the sharp cruelty. I thought to myself, even at this stage, <laughs> it's not just a five-year-old. Taking an injection is like, mm. you're about to kill, kill. me. Wow. But he has a fever. Mm -hmm. And the little one is down with the fever and needs this injection in order to get better. Not mm -hmm. even all the lollipops in the world will make mm -hmm. him better. It hurts terribly. The infant yells and cries, but only for a little while. In no time, the pain mm. of the injection is forgotten. Mm -hmm. The fever subsides, and once again, everything is rosy. So he needed that pain yes. to get better. Mm -hmm. But it's just the paradox of how can you tell me there is purpose in all of this? In all of this. And, wow. and that's how we are, you know, to, like children, yes. you know, where sometimes God is dealing with us or allowing us to go through some things. We, we just don't see it. Like, why do I need this injection? Really? Do I really need it? You know, even if you chose to take the pill, yeah. it's still bitter. It's still, <laughs> I don't know of any sweet fever medicine. Even if it wasn't, you know, this, everything is still everything. bitter. So, it's, you still need to wow. go through that. And as a Christian, mm -hmm. you hammered really on the word. Mm. You still had to run back yes. to the word. How did the word help you? The word, you know, just made me realize the things I was going through. It was like a road map, you know. Mm. I would read, I would stumble to things like, I would read the story of Job, for example. It's like, Which you wow. wrote a chapter on as well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This, this was, you know, somehow, sometimes we read these stories in the Bible and we think, oh, it's just a fable. Mm. You know, some, you know, heroic um, film trick. Mm -hmm. But this, these people were real. real. And when you look at someone else's pain, and sometimes when it's even more than yours, you, you sort of take a back seat and yeah, say, you know what, right. I'm okay. I'm okay. Ah, I'm <laughs> You did good, God, you know. And um, so that the word is like, the Bible calls it salt, calls it water, you know. So it does a lot. It heals mm. the infected wound, makes sure that it gets better. It washes you, it purifies you, it strengthens you, mm. you know. It gives you light. When there's snow, dark, there's everywhere around you is dark. You can't see. There were times when I just couldn't see how possible it would be to move on without my mom. Mm. I, just, I couldn't. I had never thought about it, like, oh, you mean there is a without a mom life? And so you, you start to get in the word, and the word is God, the word is Jesus. You, you literally are encountering this person called God, this person called Jesus, physically, as you study the word, because the word, all of a sudden, I remember I would wake up, and I would just, it was like I was eating the Bible. I would, mm. read, you know, the Holy Spirit would wake me up at night, 3 a.m., 2 a.m., I would read the Bible till morning, because... Obviously, there was something that was doing for me. I may not have seen it then, which is well, also... That's very valid. Mm -hmm. Which is also why I talked about the isolation, because mm. it was a time when I decided, okay, I'm not staying in Lagos. I'm taking my... I'm going to serve in Joss. I could have, you know, stayed in Lagos, but I just felt that something calling me out of here. I needed to go somewhere quiet. And that season of my life probably just changed it you know, entirely, you know, wow. just be away and just be with me, come away, you know, so. Fantastic. Mm. And finally, you started the process of letting go, but mm -hmm. we'll talk about that when we come back. Mm -hmm. You're still watching Chapters, and I'm still speaking with Kike Mudiaga. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It has been such a lovely time speaking with Kike Mudiaga on overcoming adversity and how she, after losing her brother, her mother, her sister, and her father, four, and she's still here, standing strong, loving God, smiling all the way. 
And so I'm sure people are watching, wondering how. Hmm. Some lose one and they never find themselves. Some don't even lose. It's just, you know, we all have our trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. But you've talked about so many things and the, pur the purpose of pain. But how did you then begin the process of letting go? Actually, just because in the book you talked about there's a time where you have to decide mm -hmm. that now mm -hmm. I let, let you, you go. go. Yeah. How was that for you? Um, I think mm, the most vivid um, encounter was probably uh, in the last chapter before the before the testimonies. Before the testimonies. <laughs> You know, I you know I would have a lot of seasons of just sitting and asking why, um, and to say this is the why for everything would be wrong because mm. you know God deals with us in different ways and He answers in ways that you would understand. You know, it's like there's a way you call your son and he knows mom is serious yes. or this is what she's trying to say. So that's um, the wise started pouring in that day, you know, and um, I kept, there were just, it was like a flood, yeah. and you just, you know, sit down, and the more you ask why, the bigger why comes, and then you <laughs> ask, and then the biggest why, and the why journey never stops, it never mm. ends, and it's actually a road, a very dangerous road. Exactly. Mm. It's good to ask why, it's good to ask why, but I remember there's something I wrote in this book, I said, um, children ask why, but sons ask what, you mm. know. You're asking, mommy, why are you flogging me? Mommy, why, are you, why, why, did, you, why did you take away my toy? Mm. But why not ask, mommy, what are you trying to do? Mm. Mommy, what are you trying to teach me? Or what, what is going on mm. that I need to stop and pause and, and, and you know, take note of? So um, sometimes the why is just you throw in a tantrum, you just keep asking the why, the why, the why. And if we just ask what, what is it you're trying to do? What is it you're, you're working in this? What is this purpose? Because you said, I'll never give you more than you can bear, you know? And knowing that God is that intentional, that he just doesn't do or allow, you know? Allow. I, I like the word allow, allow because <laughs> God is good and there's no evil in him, you know? Allowing you know, this particular thing coming your way mm. must be for a purpose, mm. you know, just like we, are, we talked about the purpose of pain. And so that day, the wise were pouring in and, you know, and I just sat down and from a why you would, some would give, bring some anger, another why would bring pain, another why would bring, you know, fear. Different emotions. Yes, just different coming. emotions were just coming and I just, all of a sudden, I could just feel it was like God walked in the room. Wow. <laughs> it just came wow. in a way that I know, you know how you know when God is here. Mm. It's not something that we know the same way. That's just the way you know, oh, God is here, or oh, God is speaking to me. And I could just feel some, it was like some, all the majesty and the glory just walking like, where were you when I made the sun? <laughs> where were you when I named the stars? Were you there when, you know, I was just wow. hearing these questions and all of a sudden from the anger, the pain, and I just came quiet, you know, quiet and in so much awe and so much, I think I guess in mushy now, it's, <laughs> it's in so fine. much awe. It's fine. It's fine. God is amazing. You know, I think what made me emotional now is not the pain. It's just yeah, I know. an overwhelming love for him, you know, knowing that he loves me so much and he won't, he won't hurt me, you know. Even our, our, our natural parents won't hurt you. I remember my mom was very, very strict with us. And there were times she would beat us and we'll sit down as children and we'll ask him, are you sure mommy is our mommy? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I look back a few years back and I'm like, wow, what a wonderful mother. You know, she put all this in me. And when she was doing it, all I could feel was the pain and the anger. Like, why is she punishing us? Why is she beating us so much? And I look at the woman I've become and the things I've had to go through, okay. the things that, you know, that have brought so much favor on my life. And I realized 
It didn't come easy. Mm. You know, it didn't come because she spoiled me silly and, mm. you know, but I learned those things through some sort of pain. And, you know, the moment God walked into that room, all that just disappeared. And mm. all I could do was just cry and thank him <laughs> and love him and hug mm. him. Like, you don't, you don't hate me. You love me you so love much. Me. In the midst of all yes, of this. Yes, I could just feel the love just pull me out of everything. Break the chains and just, I don't know. I can't explain it. And all I could hear was... Um, Cabio CEO, that song, you know, mm. Cabio CEO. Who, who dares ask you? I mean, we ask, it's good to ask, but when he comes and he just shows you something, a side of his glory, you don't ask anymore. You just start to worship. Job said, Lord, I've heard about you. Our father has told us about you, but now I have seen mm. you and you've silenced all my questions and I just worship you. You know, Job had so many questions. That was exactly where I was. I was asking the wise man. And he just showed Job the mountains, the seas, and the things I've created, you know? And Job just said, ooh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I just now I <laughs> like, hey, just, you're, you must be doing something good. Mm. That's, that, that was my conclusion. Mm. You know, it will make sense sometimes after a while. Sometimes, you know, sooner than later. But, you know, it makes sense. It but makes sense to me. It, it's, it takes a process to also get there. Yes, it does. To also get it to does. that point. It does. It, 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 it takes the surrender to get mm. there. Because if you don't surrender, if you don't let go, you won't. You just keep holding on to something that you can't even control. You, don't, you have no power over. And holding on is like actually struggling in, mm. in the waves. If someone is trying to rescue someone drowning, they'll say, then they'll say stop, stop just struggling, become. just be calm. But if you struggle, the more you struggle, the more you sink. Almost like you'll be still just and know be that still I'm and not. just let me carry you. And that's what God did. He carried me. You know. And so many years later, mm. this is almost nine years after your father. Yes. Your father in 2007. Yes. So all of this has happened. Mm -hmm. How has everything shaped you into the person that you are mm. now? Going through all of that and mm -hmm. coming, the purpose of the pain, mm. letting go, yeah. the surrender. You look back years now mm -hmm. and something that you almost thought I would never have gone, have gone through, through. This. Now you are here standing strong. Mm -hmm. How has that changed even your view of the world, your perception of God, and made you the Kike Mudiaga you are today? Mm. Um, through, through stages, it's made me realize that there's more to me than just living through life. There's a purpose. If I, I, I choose to believe that going through this, I can't, even, I can't even begin to tell you how many testimonies have come out of this, this book, you know, just people reading it, people who's been, who've been through similar things or mm -hmm. who were struggling. You know, it gave time. meaning, it gave a, a fresh meaning to my life, knowing that, you know, the Bible says, you, we comfort others through the comfort we have received. And it's such an honor that God mm -hmm. will say, can you help me go through this so that someone, you can help, you know, someone else. It's an honor to be chosen to go through wow. that so that you can help the millions mm -hmm. that you know, wow. wouldn't have, you know, been able to come through. And sometimes, you know, I remember the pain of writing the book and I'm thinking, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> and when I hear, get a strange phone call, and I, in fact, I was just like, wow, wow, this is making sense now. This, this was for someone else. Mm. A lot of times we don't realize that being a child of God is an honor and it comes with the responsibility of going through some things so that others you know, don't can, have to, don't yes. have to work and learn or, or from, can learn you, from you. So it. it's, um, it's, it's given me that sense of confidence that knowing, knowing that I actually went through and came through, mm. not by my might or my power, but by, with God on my side, I made it through. Also given me a sense of purpose, knowing that this, this was not about me. So I'm looking out there, you know, reaching out to people who are going through, like, hey, hey, come on, you know, there's a lifeboat here, there's a floater here, come, come to, the, to the raft, you know, from your shipwreck mm. and all of that. So, and also giving worship more meaning. I the can imagine. You know, the sovereignty of God, not just, you know, not, not just knowing, you know, God for, okay, I've given my life to the Savior, but knowing him as the king, knowing him as the Lord, as God, as the final say, as the most sovereign being, you know. 
Um, and what yes. informed, I, I like how you ended the book. Okay. You then got stories mm. or testimonies from mm. other people who had gone through mm -hmm. a similar type of loss. Yes. What informed that, that part of part. the book? Um, that part was because I realized that there were different um, feelings and different emotions that came from the different types of loss. Mm. You know, there were people who, there were, there, so sometimes people lose someone and they feel guilty. Maybe they left the door open and the little boy crawled out or a patient and a doctor's relationship where the doctor lost the patient because, you know, maybe they didn't diagnose something properly. Mm. You know, I just realized that there were people dealing with the pain of loss in different ways. So I wanted the readers to have, you know, to sort of relate closely to maybe, maybe not my story, someone else. Oh, okay, that, let me read the woman mm. who, who passed, uh, you know, who lost her husband to cancer because mm. that's what I'm that's dealing what with. Okay. okay, let me read someone who, who, who lost a baby that was never born, you know, maybe uh, miscarriage. Okay, that's what I'm dealing with. It's closer to me. I wanted to be able to touch these other types of losses as well, so that, you know, the book would be... You and know, different people can yes. get from different stories. Exactly, and learn and different learn. ways of, I mean, how they dealt with, with their, their, own loss. their own loss. So wow. that was a very um, important part of the book. I must say thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. writing the book. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Everyone, I, you know, I, I, I personally believe, mm -hmm. like I said, there is nobody in the world mm. that does not go through a storm. True. And the storm is not once. Mm. It's till Jesus comes. Yeah. <laughs> I say one of the most important scriptures is mm. that in this world, you will have tribulation. True. Be of good cheer. Yeah. So I've overcome the world. Where can people get copies of the book? If you go to kikemudiaga.com. They can go to kikemudiaga.com yes. and can get at Laterna. And then this, the bookstore in a uh, shop right in VI upstairs, what do you call that one? Uh, the media store. Yes, the, the media store. The, the, the hub. The hub, yes. Okay. You get from the hub. And um, Conga. Okay. okay. Yes. So online options, mm -hmm. offline options. Or offline options. Laterna, Conga, the media, the hub at the at ShopRite Mall mm -hmm. and kikemudiaga.com. This book is certainly a must read. And they can order from Amazon, which most people do. So if you're not anywhere in the world. That means you can get anywhere in the oh, world. Oh, yes, anywhere. All over the world. And mm -hmm. the Storm King. Amazon. You have been such <laughs> an amazing guest. And this has been, I mean, this is, we've been truly touched. Mm. Thank you for joining us on the show. So thank, thank you for, for having for me. Thank you for pouring out your heart <laughs> and sharing your story. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. has been such an inspiring episode talking about overcoming adversity. Trials, tribulations, challenges, adversity happens to every one of us at different stages and phases in life. And while we cannot deny the fact that the pain is real, we certainly know that the pain is never forever. If you're watching this today and you're going through any form of adversity, hold on, stay strong, you will smile again. Thank you for watching and God bless you.